uh, 8.30. I'll call the Land, Water, Forest, Resources, August uh, committee meeting to order. Madam Clerk, roll, please. Bruce Paulson? Here. Ron Buckholz? Present. Jesse Betcher? Here. Mark Helwig? Here. Brian Bizonette? Kevin Chepik? Here. Here. Uh, with the open meeting The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 1924 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Very good. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, 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 indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. I see we have one public comment. Ms. Zilber, do you want to speak, please? Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, Birchwood, Wisconsin, and Edgewater property owner. Um, my public comment as submitted is a request to put a September agenda item up for maybe a rather lengthy discussion, reviewing the draft uh, Sawyer County Comprehensive Plan that the committee has voted to forward on to the county board uh, for setting a public hearing. Specifically, um, there are nine elements to uh, a comprehensive plan. Specific to this committee, a focus or attention might be placed on the natural resources, land uses, agriculture, and implementation of the plan. So for instance, the committee did not get into depth about how we should be looking to protect uh, our water resources. And on your agenda today is a wonderful example of an actual action and implementation the county could take to help pr protect water resources. And so those are the things that um, there was not input into. Uh, none of the comprehensive plan has been discussed before a committee. And I, I guess I'll be appearing at all the committees and ask that a September agenda item be a review before public comment to get input from department heads and county supervisors. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is up. Considering approval of the uh, July minutes, I'll make a motion to approve as presented, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'll second it. All right. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the mid, uh, July minutes. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Uh, we don't have any, Greg, we don't have any events to approve. Not this month, no. All right. And the next item then would be the Sir County Treasurer's Department, uh, the over-the-counter land sale for the, the town of Bass Lake. We would need approval uh, of this item to send out to the county board for approval. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the over-the-counter land sale the town of Bass Lake and send it on to the county board. Okay. Second. All right, motion's been made and seconded to approve the Bass Lake over-the-county, over-the-counter land sale, send it on to the county board. Any more discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. So now we have our NORTEC report. How do you want to do that, gentlemen? Uh, so I'll probably just, if everybody doesn't know what it is, uh, NORTEC is Northern Regional Trail Advisory Committee. It's a 10 county uh, conglomeration where there's at least two representatives from each county, and one of those is supposed to be a county board supervisor. And they normally meet quarterly, but they're, because of COVID, there hasn't been a meeting since January of 2020. So this meeting that we held in uh, July was you know, the first one in whatever that is, 18 months. <clears throat> so from the, here on out, they should be fully in quarterly. And uh, it was my first meeting. So I was uh, you know, just in uh, absorb mode and trying to learn as much as I could. But basically it's a multi-county partnership that advocates for the safe and responsible ATV trail use, user education, expansion and management of recreational trail opportunities, and connecting more people to recreational trails. So that's an overarching view of what they do. But uh, the, the chairman of the board is, is Dan Toll, and he's also on the, the ORV, which is the uh, Outdoor Recreational Vehicle, no, Off-Road Recreational Vehicle Council, that's a governor's uh, council that assists with you know, funding of grants and stuff like that. So he's got, you know, his finger on the pulse down there. 
and I think that they do a lot of good work as far as, you know, they can speak as one voice from the whole northern Wisconsin, as opposed to just Sawyer County trying to say, hey, we need more money for our trails and stuff like that. So I think that they do good work from what I've, uh, you know, witnessed in that one meeting and with legislative uh, proposals and stuff like that and grant funding. Um, and they only request uh, $500 per county per year. So that's 10 counties. So it's $5,000 budget. So, and, the, and it's been that amount for at least 10 years, maybe more. So um, hopefully there isn't much pushback for that $500 because I think it's a, a pretty solid investment in my opinion. So that's just uh, the overarching view of who they are. I'll let Don speak a little bit if you have anything to add on. Just one of the things if I could add on to that, um, what, what they have done now is 10 counties with motorized recreations expanded out, snowmobiles, they've been pretty well set for connecting. When they started, you know, connecting up ATVs from county to county and NORTEC developed the map, 10 county map that, you know, so you can go from Sawyer County into Washburn. And so it's a regional map. Um, it's both snowmobile and ATV, one side snowmobile, one side ATV to help it out. It back as a tourism part of this thing, they paid for the map out of their funding source. But Nortec is one that the counties got together to put this down on, on paper and develop the map. So it's one of the huge things is with the expansion of motorized trails, now that we can connect. Any questions of the NORTAC representatives? Thank you. Good report. So we'll hear one, another one in a quarter, maybe. October uh, is the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, so it should be quarterly from here on out. Pardon me? Should be quarterly from, okay, from here so on out. Let's well, I, know, I used to sit on that committee, and I've never, when I was on it, never sat in one meeting. Never had one. So that's why hmm. um, you're lucky. So and it was good information, Patrick. Thank you. Madam Clerk, did we put this on the agenda, appropriate agenda? November. November. Okay. Thank you. All right. Land records and the county surveyor department report. What do you have for us, sir? Okay. Um, still shorthanded on the survey crew. We haven't been able to hire anybody, so we're struggling getting done what we should be doing. Um, we had a project for the National Geodetic Survey that Chris did himself this summer. He's been working on that, just finished it up last week, and he's been installing all the addressing signs, which are kind of a big deal this year. Um, Brian takes care of ordering them and all and everything. He checked this morning, there's been 182 applicants so far this year for new addresses. So that's a big chunk of a job for somebody to just take care of all that. Um, Property listing was caught up as a, to Monday, so they're in the same week. Um, GIS Tech has been working a bunch on creating a new easement layer. We get road easement questions every single day, um, back, especially this stuff is getting developed with poor access, who, you know, where easements are. So she's trying to make a GIS layer for that. She says she's got about a thousand easements done and mapped, and she feels there are probably at least 3,000 in the county. So it's the research thing and getting the map. Um, so what I got to report. Okay. So the filling your open position, are you getting applicants or why are we've had two so far? Um, is it money or is it? Yeah, more like too many jobs and not enough people that want to work out. <laughs> okay. First time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we had a discussion like that at the Health and Human Service Committee last night that uh, uh, somebody, another department had an opening as well, and they got three applicants, and they're like, how come we only got three applicants? And it's like, you're lucky you got three applicants, <laughs> because usually it's zero or one after a, a month or two. So when you see all those help, uh, you know, we need help kind of signs around town, we're in the same boat. We have labor shortages here as well. The state job boards, like... I get emails, you know, for about what you're looking for, somebody that's looking for a job. Um, since April, I haven't seen one person looking for a job, but like again today, there's two other colonies looking for people. And it's just, yeah, there's no good thing. Okay, any questions of the surveyor? Just report. All right, thank you. Mr. Forrester, you're up. Okay. 
I, I guess the first one should be recreational yeah. trails report. Do you have anything else, Mr. Marote? Just that it's still been extremely busy out there for trails. Okay. Keep it short and sweet. All right. So now I'm sorry. Great. Um, okay. For July, uh, we had 10 sales listed as active. Uh, we still got a fair amount of activity um, considering we still have some market struggles. Uh, Timber sale value sold on cut on file right now is just a little over 4.2 million. Uh, sale revenue in July was 185,000. Uh, our year-to-date revenue is uh, just uh, just over 1.35 million. Um, we've got about 286,000 billed out right now. So I would say we're on target at this point uh, to, to hit our revenue budget. Um, Contractors are still finding markets. Um, hardwood is still depressed. Obviously, um, there's still there's still workings going on with Verso, but uh, as a whole, we're doing pretty well. Uh, sale inspections for the month are on target. Uh, we've got some tracks uh, starting to be turned in for our fall timber sale that we will be uh, putting out in October. So we're going through the review process on all those sales right now. Uh, recon acres are on target. Um, Good neighbor authority. Uh, we didn't have a lot of activity in July, um, but we just uh, started on our for year 22 uh, contract with the state on that. Uh, it's approximately 575 hours of timber sale admin and establishment for just over $40,000. Um, other items of note, uh, Oakville, we're back in that season where we're getting detections on potential sites. Um, we did have an aerial survey from the state. Uh, we did have a number of possible sites uh, on county forest in areas that we had some before. So right now we're going through and ground truthing those sites to see what we need to have treated. If it's either some will be oak wilt, some could be chestnut boar. That's a, another pest that seems to uh, thrive in the uh, drought conditions that we've had so far. So. Uh, chestnut boar is not a big deal as long as we don't have widespread drought. It's a naturally occurring one, but it, uh, it does take out some oaks occasionally. Um, ATV snowmobile trails, uh, the contracts are out for the six rehab projects. Uh, they're scheduled to begin and complete construction this fall. Um, that's about as uh, far as I can pin the contractor down for completing those, but uh, hopefully September, October, we'll get those banged out. Uh, and also, I don't have it in my uh, report, but in the uh, governor's budget, they did approve uh, increasing the acreage share payment for county forest lands to the towns from 30 cents to 63 cents an acre. So uh, townships in Sawyer County that have county forest as a total, uh, we will have to see an increase of about $40,000 going directly to the townships. So, um, it doesn't seem like a huge amount, but this has been a number that's been set for I don't know how long at 30 cents an acre. And um, for some of you that may have been on the committee, we have had requests in the past for the county to increase our, our seventh share, our 10%. Uh, the 10% is set by statute, but the counties can give more. But we have had townships ask for more, and we've always directed them to, to tackle this acre share from the state. So. Uh, this is a, a good step um, for the townships to kind of offset some of the road maintenance issues on, on some of these county blocks that uh, have huge uh, public acreages in the, in the townships. So, any questions on the county foresters report? Okay, then you want to move on to the loop source or whatever. Okay, yeah, I included the uh, kind of an overview of, of the blue source uh, carbon credit market that uh, we've been given. Uh, just kind of goes through the basics of the program, you know, how it works, what it is. Um, I did have a, a meeting with blue source uh, late last week, um, and we're in the process of, of setting up our free assessment with them. Um, so right now, uh, I have, I'm in the process of compiling a, a large amount of our recon data, our harvest history, uh, you name it, they, they want a, a huge glut of our info uh, and they'll uh, put together our, our assessment for us. And, and this is all free at this point. Um, turnaround on this is once I get 
all the data that they're requesting, they should have an assessment within three weeks um, to see how viable that, that this program would be for us. Um, it sounds like it, it will be. Um, public forests, uh, specifically county forests, are really sought after for the carbon credits. You know, we're really secure. Um, there's, there's no worries about change in ownership or change of governments or anything like that. This is a, a worldwide program, but county forests are, are really targeted um, for a high value credit. Um, so we went through, uh, we talked about some of this before in this pamphlet should explain some of it, kind of the, the timelines, but um, the turnaround, if, if they give us a, a favorable assessment, um, it's gonna be about an 18 month turnaround from assessment to a money in hand if we, if we go this route. Um, the way they market it, you know, once, once they hit the 18 months, they should have a buyer ready to go. So it, it's gonna be pretty quick, but it does take time for them to put this all together. So 18 months is, is kind of what we're looking at, but we should have a lot more info on this hopefully next month. Um, if, if we get all the info in and the assessment done in time for uh, September committee. Any questions on what Greg has just reported on? So we put this on the agenda for next month too. Okay, so it's going to be a lot of money. Keep telling us. <sighs> it, it could be. It could be. You know, if if this market keeps up, um, I know there's a lot of question marks about it. You know what we're actually selling. You know, but uh, it's carbon right now is a product, and and we we have you know a marketable share of it. It sounds like. Um, you know, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of administrative work, you know, on our end, but uh, it, uh, if, if the numbers come in like it seems like it, it could be, then it should be worth it. Okay. Uh, we move on to the DNR report then? Sure. Um, in the last meeting, uh, you wanted an update on the Connors Creek Bridge. Uh, there was a meeting last July with DNR Engineering. Um, there's some things to pass along. And this, what I'm about to say is uh, subject, subject and dependent on if everything comes together as planned. Uh, so the bridge uh, will remain closed until the fall of 2022. Uh, there's a snowmobile reroute uh, that they have in place. Uh, the route is gonna follow the same route that ATVs are using along Highway M. Um, there's some logistics that are still being worked out between Sawyer County, the Alliance, law enforcement, and the DNR. However, this, this route looks the most promising. Uh, the project is currently sitting with the Department of Administration and is in the preliminary process of architect, architect, tech, architect, oh, I can't even see it. It's in the process of engineering. So <laughs> let's leave it at that. <laughs> Um, so that, that's all I have to pass along on the Connors Creek Bridge. Until I hear something more, I'll, I'll certainly let you know. I think you have one question from an interested yeah. party. Question on, on the reroute, there are, for ATVs going down the blacktop road, it's not a problem on you know, Highway M. How many miles is that going to be for snowmobiles? You know, and is that going to be all on blacktop road? I'll look it back. Yeah, three or four miles. Blacktop road, which is you know, especially if you're running a humor. I imagine there's got to be ample room in the ditch for most spots. Or maybe not. I don't know. No. Okay, I'll, I'll get back with you on that. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yes. On the uh, any updates on the uh, Mosquito Brook uh, Bridge or Mr. Marple's property? If uh, the DNR is going to take that back or Thing like I'd have that. to check on that too. I, I don't know. I don't know if the Department of Justice has taken that up or not. Okay. Yeah, maybe if you could look into it and see if there's any okay. updates for, for next month. Maybe. Yeah. I guess we should put that up future right on the agenda too. Okay, moving on to forestry. Um, Fire suppression, uh, for the month of July, there was some minor activity in the county. There were, there were six reported fires that burned less than an acre. Uh, 
uh, causes were equipment malfunction, lightning, debris burning, fireworks, and one with human causes. Uh, that brings the year to date to 41 fires burning a total of a little over 15 acres at the county level. Uh, should be going down now with recent rains unless dry weather patterns return. Uh, work projects in the county forest. Uh, we completed a 68-66 acre timber sale establishment project on Cooter 8 block. I'm currently working one on uh, Thorn Apple Green in the winter block. Uh, forest Health, as Greg had mentioned, there was an aerial flight where oak wilt detection, um, GPS points were recorded, and then the sheet files were set to gray. And then, as he said, it would go out with the ground truth, what they was detected from the air. Uh, also, the DNR secured a grant through the U.S. Forest Service to assist private landowners with the treatment of oak wilt on private lands. Um, I, I'm not sure. I tried. I called Paul this morning before I came here, but I never heard back. I don't know. If, there's some criteria uh, that has to be met. Uh, I, I can, if I can get a hold of them, I can pass that along at the next meeting. Um, as far as you know, if somebody has a problem on on their private property as to how go about getting involved or try to take advantage of this opportunity that's out there. For certification, uh, last week there was an audit in Chippewa, Clark, Eau Claire, and Polk counties. Um, a draft report is not yet available. Uh, as soon as that uh, comes to fruition, I'll bring that up at the next meeting. Uh, is this a sustainable forest? Uh, yeah, S SFI and FSC. Um, it was Sawyer County scheduled in 2023. So, uh, there was no, I, I read through the initial, there was no major, yeah, it was no major minor. findings, just some, uh, I think more of it fell on some of this, the DNR end for. Yeah, there was the, the BMP reporting. Um, it, it, we're kind of like behind like two and a half years after the results were in as far as getting that out to the public. Then there were some uh, minor things as far as uh, herbicide applications, but we'll have to follow that. You know, we'll follow up on that. Right. And we'll have to talk about that at the partnership meeting. Um, wildlife management. Uh, some more work is underway at Parks Farm. Uh, they're putting in some drivable fire breaks. Uh, they want to expand the current habitat that's currently there. Um, there's similar practices being done across northern Wisconsin on federal, state, and county forest. And the money to pay for these projects is coming from the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and Wisconsin DNR Elk Fund. All I have. Oh, any questions on the DNR report? No, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Zoning and Conservation Department. Yeah, for the Conservation Department updates, uh, still looking at uh, continuous dam operations and maintenance. It's uh, been an interesting year controlling water when we don't have rain events for three weeks and uh, have to close everything up and then all of a sudden get four inches of rain in a two day period. So. Always fun and challenging events there. Uh, Tim Seidel from our office actually visited the town of Draper on Monday uh, to speak to the folks down there about the upcoming uh, Bruni Dam replacement project uh, that is scheduled uh, for later this year. It's kind of getting everything uh, lined up and, and put together. And then the budget cycle and the major renovations and repairs to occur uh, basically January 1 of 2022. Uh, so that'll be coming back in front of this committee to give final approval on the project and submit out for bids on the project. Uh, we'll likely see that here in September, October's meeting, depending on when the engineer can get, get everything lined up and we get final approval from the DNR. Um, our final approval for our five-year review of the Sawyer County Land and Water Resources Management Plan by the Land and Water Conservation Board was approved. We got that final approval letter back. That five-year review lays out the plan projects proposed um, from the Surrey County uh, Conservation Department. Uh, there's been several other shoreline restoration riprap projects that were completed uh, through the county using the cost share funds that we get from DADCAP. Uh, Tim Seidel from our office also attended Farm Technology Days and said that was uh, 
very interesting to look at some of the new technologies that are coming through for farmers, uh, looking at uh, kind of sustainable agricultural through uh, years to come here. Uh, we reviewed several erosion control plans and 11 on-site inspections were conducted by conservation staff. Uh, NRC as vegetation standards uh, and training was provided for staff. Staff also met with UW Extension regarding future nutrient management programs in the state. Uh, we are still looking at rehiring Kelly's position who took a new job in the conservation department. We are looking at doing an internal transfer to her position and then rehiring that internal transfers position. Uh, we've received a few applications. I actually have an interview at 10 o'clock for an individual, uh, but reiterate what, what Dan had said and, and, and everyone else is we received four applications. One of them was probably someone that didn't want to actually apply for that position, but um, uh, we are running short staffed and it is a challenge to find bodies to fill those roles. So. Uh, I was tasked last month to look at a wellhead protection ordinance at a county level. Uh, I haven't had time to uh, bring any of that information back to this committee. I'll look at doing that and investigating further into that for September's Land Water Board. Um, do you want me to give a little update on Perch Lake at all? Tom and or Bruce? It's up to you, Tom, I guess. Sort of. much, yeah. I'll, I'll give a little bit and, and ultimately we have to have another conversation on that, but I, I was contacted by the, uh, I guess, president of the Perch Lake Fishing Association. They had an engineer from SEH go out there and really wanted to explore the hydrology of Perch Lake and where all this potential water was coming from. That engineer kind of concluded that some of the wetland complexes might be contributing to that water in that system. and at least looking at the elevations and then talking with Dan, we, we still kind of question that some of those wetland areas could be influxing the uh, elevations into Perch Lake, seeing how the uh, wetlands are already at a lower elevation. But um, Perch Lake Fishing Association has basically tasked Sawyer County to have an historical data approach of lake levels on Perch Lake. Uh, really what that would entail is, is the county, whether it's through our department, whether it's through surveying departments, anyone that really has a some kind of surveying equipment that could set a benchmark on the property and shoot elevations of current lake level on Perch Lake. What that would do is give us a, a snapshot in time over the next 20 to 30 years as to what water levels are doing in Perch Lake. Again, that's a long-term outlook. It's certainly not anything that would be used for a short-term solution, but uh, certainly something that could be used for future generations if they want to see those <coughs> ebbs and flows of that lake elevation. Uh, Perch Lake has asked us to do that. It's kind of up to us whether or not we want to. You know, for shooting elevations of current lake level, it really wouldn't be that hard. Like I said, we would just really need um, some landowner to give us permission to go on their property, put a benchmark on that property, and two to three to maybe four times a year, take an elevation shot of where current lake elevation would be. So that way, again, you could see the ebbs and flows that it was at uh, 101, then it was at 101.5, then it was at 99.5. So you could see the, the ebbs and flows. You then could compile that back together with annual rainfall events. And, and again, get that snapshot in time. I can and bring that back as, can sorry. They, can't they shoot the lake levels? They certainly could. It, yeah, so why would we have to think if they could? designate somebody to do it and yeah. or to you or whomever to keep it. And I think that's a question that we probably have to have with the Perch Lake Fishing Association president, James Osteen, as far as you know who wants to, to handle that and, and who's going to then compile and keep that data. Uh, again, for most likely it's going to need to be several decades of data right. before you have any kind of trend lines. Uh, but I can bring that back as an agenda item. And, and maybe I'll have that conversation outside of, of this committee prior to uh, yeah, bringing it back as a, a true agenda item. But I just wanted to kind of keep you guys in the loop there. Yes, another uh, another comment on that. Um, you know, they they made that request of the county, uh, and you know, we're trying to determine uh, if we can expend or want to expend resources uh, to do that. Um, so you know. Between Dan and, and Jay and myself, we've had some of those uh, discussions, at least uh, via email, just to determine if that is useful for them or not, and if we want to expend the resources to do that. As you mentioned, there might be other ways to do it. 
it might be something that maybe doesn't provide enough value for us to uh, spend the resources on. So working through some of those issues. Yeah. And then the uh, last one is as far as the comp plan update, um, we have been working with Northwest Regional Planning Commission. We have a working draft version that is available online. I can certainly send any committee members that would be interested in that draft uh, version. Uh, there's a, a website for that. It will be coming to uh, County Board next Thursday for County Board to set an official public hearing date. Um, that public hearing date would have a recommendation from that ad hoc committee of the Comprehensive Plan Development Committee uh, for a date in October. Um, but again, to bring that draft comp plan to other committees, again, that Comprehensive Plan Development Committee was formulated as an ad hoc committee of the County Board of Supervisors to basically be tasked with doing this update process. If any committee members are interested in that process, um, they can certainly attend any of those meetings. We had a public open house meeting uh, two weeks ago. Uh, as far as a, a question and answer, Northwest Regional Planning put on a, a great presentation. Uh, we had one general member of the public uh, come to that meeting. So we haven't seen a lot of public, true part, public participation in that. Uh, again, that comp plan, as far as specific elements of the objections and actions was also sent out to all department heads and other DNR contacts and other local agency contacts. And I received two responses back from the 22 individuals that I sent that email out to. No one had changes to the plan. So again, to bring that in front of these committees, again, that ad hoc committee was tasked with doing the update. It, it was a, kind of my uh, anticipatory interpretation that county board wanted the ad hoc committee to formulate the plan and give them a polished version of it for approval and not to have it go to other subcommittees. Um, but I will leave that up to the hires that be if they want to see a comp plan update at each committee level. Outside of that, that's all I have for the conservation department update. If there's any other questions, I can certainly answer them. We can move on to number or letter B. Yeah. Quick, quick question on the Perch Lake thing. Don't we already have historical data? I thought you presented that before going back to like the 50s. We do. Um, we, we have historical data as far as kind of how the roadways used to, that didn't to run through lake there. levels at all? Not to the extent that they're kind of wanting. And, I don't know why they're wanting this now. Again, this isn't going to be a short term solution for what they've at least asked the county to do. And, okay. and that's really to take those those elevations. You know, Perch Lake, they're, they're still on that that threshold, or at least for, for what they see as that threshold as, you know, if this water comes up another foot and a half, two feet, they're going to have a lot of inundated structures out there. So they're looking at it as a, you know, worst case scenario, if that water continues to rise, what is their short-term solution? And that's dumping the water out to a lower lake elevation, be it an island lake or be it Barber Lake. Mm -hmm. Now there's been some pushbacks for both of those lakes. They don't want the water from Perch Lake either. So I mean, that, that creates a huge uh, yeah, ball of mess there that uh, can of worms that you don't necessarily want to open. And something that would be very expensive if the county was to tackle something like that. Yeah. Um, now we did state to Perch Lake that you know we wouldn't be funding a major project for them and that it would just be in the interest of a few and the county doesn't have budget money to do that, but we would have helped and assist them in any permitting process that would be needed through a DNR level or FEMA process um, and be kind of a technical mm -hmm. guide or technical assistance. Um, now this lake elevation that they're looking at is a little bit more than just technical, it actually would require office staff to go out there and perform those elevations. Uh, but again, I think I do want to bring that up probably next month and give okay. you guys more of an update on that. Okay. Uh, so moving on then to letter B, uh, decontamination ordinance update. Uh, so this is going back into oh, probably winter of 2020 um, when Whitefish Lake Property Owners Association uh, kind of came to me wanting to look into the potential adoption process of a decontamination ordinance. Uh, we talked about it a little bit again, this is again uh, 10 to 12 months ago, 
um, a Whitefish Lake Property Association owners, they did end up getting a grant fund from the DNR to uh, basically draft this ordinance, put this ordinance into adoption, and then also be granted funded for these decontamination cleaning stations. Uh, so with help of, of Jane Getting, um, she has kind of put together some uh, frequently asked questions for decontamination and also has started the draft process of a working ordinance. Uh, I'll probably turn it over to Jane if you guys have any other specific questions, uh, but ultimately at the end, I would be looking for a motion from this committee to send this on to legal counsel uh, for a full legal review of the ordinance. Uh, and again, with the grant, uh, the grant does allow for my time legal counsel's time and the adoption process of this ordinance to be covered in the grant, which Whitefish Lake Association has uh, stated to me that they would reimburse the county for that. Uh, it would be up then to the county and specifically the Zoning and Conservation Department then to be as the uh, enforcement agency for that. We would be working with the Sheriff's Department in that uh, if they saw a violation, they would uh, take the information, report it back to us, and then we would follow up with the actual enforcement actions. So zoning and conservation would have to be the, the ordinance yeah. doing the enforcement. The ordinance would fall under our department, the zoning and conservation department. Um, and we would work with the recreational service officer uh, or through the Sheriff's Department that they would kind of be our eyes and ears in the field, that if they saw a violation, right. they would take down the information and report it back to us. We would then follow up with the actual enforcement of it because the ordinance would be held under our office. Okay, so a part of our process would be the Sheriff's Department should look at this. They should, yeah. Well, they, they will. Yeah, and they were involved in the early stages of this process and uh, yeah, we'll right. definitely bring them back into the fold here as well. Um, in conversations with Sheriff Morotech and Conservation Officer, um, oh, what is his name? Well, what is he? Q2. Uh, they had no issues in this, and, and everyone sees this as being a, a good thing to have for the county. There's several other counties adjacent that already have one in place. And if you look at any of the aquatic invasive species charts, uh, you can see the swath coming from Minnesota, and it's, it's coming right. right up this way. Uh, the spiny water flea, the zebra mussels, and we already got milk oil curly leaf pondweed here in most of our lakes. but. Uh, It'd be that zebra mussels and other aquatic invasive species that that's what a true decontamination ordinance serves to prevent. And you could, your department could handle the enforcement part of it. Yeah, I think we could. Um, I don't see any type of ordinance that you create. You have to have some type of meat into it or teeth into it, or people are never going to abide by it. Um, but again, as, as part of the first couple of years that this gets out there, it would be more of an educational process. Um, I don't think we'd go right to citations on, on anyone that wasn't cleaning their vessel, but in part of Whitefish Lake Property Owners Association getting grant funding to make these decontamination stations, they also needed an ordinance sure, in effect. Um, so yes, the first couple of years would be educational process, and then from there, if there were still known violators and repeat offenders, then yes, we would have meat in this ordinance to uh, seek violations and citations against them. I'll turn it over to Jane if she wants to add any additional info or if you have any additional questions. Okay, who drafted this? You did? I did. Okay, good. Sounds pretty legal to me. Good. I guess the back other ordinances of Florida County and I cross-referenced uh, the area comes to our cap ordinances, Bayfield, Washburn, Burnett, and Ashland. Okay. So I tried to incorporate language that they all use to make it um, similar. I'm, I'm sorry, I probably should ask you to identify yourself, but I think Jane you Jane name and like property owners association. I Pardon me. I, I couldn't hear the last name. Jane Getting, Whitefish Lake Property Owners. G A D D. G E T T. Yep, like know. getting a pizza. Okay. And if you all remember, most of the uh, larger lakes were in support of this ordinance as well in Sawyer County. I presented all that data when I came to this committee ten months ago. 
including um, Alcio uh, Conservation, who also worked with me on that draft. I just have a couple of questions. On section 3E, we talk about a, a pronounce it, but uh, cattails both without seeds and something else. What's the status for Sawyer County? Are we listed as uh, at risk for Phragmites? Oh, Phragmites, that's how you say it. Yeah. All right, yeah, I, my brother lives in Green Bay and Phragmites is an issue. Oh, yeah, we have quite a bit of it here too. Um, and it, it spreads pretty easily. Right. Um, we try to nip it when we, when we can. Okay. We usually see it in ditch lines. If it starts getting right. around lakes, it, it can be pretty invasive. But our had Sarah County designated as one of the counties to have a problem with drag mighty. No, it's just that's just a curious question. I don't need to answer it. I'm not sure if they're if they're listed as it. We do have Frank Mighties, and it is um, something that you're not able to plant and or transport for an R40. Right. Okay. And then on um, section five, I was with section five point <coughs> a, a small one. Um, why don't we uh, the first second forfeiture? Why don't we make it five hundred dollars rather than just a little hundred bucks? Would that be my recommendation? And then in that same section C, last line, I, I think it should be issued rather than issues. So in C, you said? Yeah, I think the last line of C may be issues by. Oh, sure. It issued, I think it is. It goes out, it submits, that's a bit. And what about city police and town police? Any, uh, do they have any involvement? We haven't talked to city of Hayward. Um, I guess they would have Lake Hayward as part of their enforcement. Uh, town of Hayward police too. Town of Hayward would have a few, because they, they do have the town constable there. Um, we can speak to them if they want to, to team up and, right. and report uh, violations to us. Right. What else about conservation? Yeah, we have had conversations with them. They were, they were on board with that as well. Okay, perfect. Okay. So those were my questions. So you're looking for approval then to forward this to the, our corporate council and then it would go for publication after that? For public hearing after that, yep. Okay, and, but we can do that all in one motion, can't we? You, you can, yep. Um, or do you want to come back here after legal review? No, I, I think if you if you want to look at um, that you would be making a motion for approval to send it up to legal review and then to uh, set a public hearing for the ordinance adoption process. Yeah. Okay, all right. But can we set up that public hearing in this committee or is that up to a on the board? The public know. hearing could be held here. Uh, and that's always kind of the, when we ran that um, that livestock ordinance or the uh, the waste management ordinance right. uh, for, for manure storage pits, we actually ran two public hearings because we're a combined department of zoning and conservation. Right. And zoning has more of these uh, state statute authorities to create ordinances and do citations. So just to play it safe, I'd probably end up doing two public hearings. I'd do one here at the Land and Water Forest Resource Committee and I'd do one at the Zoning uh, Committee just to make sure that all of our ducks are covered and, and no one has issues with the adoption process. Right. And so the, you, the, the each committee schedules the public hearing then, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Just like zoning public hearing. Yes. We would list it as a public hearing, and if it got through the public hearing process and uh, approval, the committees would then make recommendations for approval that would go then to county board. Okay. Right. So we're looking for a motion to go to corporate council and schedule public hearings. Mr. Paulson, I'll make that motion to send uh, the decontamination ordinance re three draft to legal. Uh, to uh, look uh, look it over 
And then from there, um, make a motion to set up a public hearing on that draft. Very good. Does that work? Yeah. Is there a second to that motion? No second. All right, motion's been made and seconded uh, to forward this to the legal counsel and schedule public hearings. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Very good, thank you. And other, other lake associations would then do, uh, develop the contamination statements, sta stations, okay. All right, USDA report. Um, all the USDA officer fully staffed now. Um, USDA came up with two new programs. Uh, one is to benefit the timber harvesters and the truckers in Sawyer County here. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have a 10% loss for the COVID last year. Um, they could receive up to $125,000. We gave two different payments. Right. Do we have anybody that qualifies? There's at least 15 applicants right now that I know of. Oh, good. Good. And then the second one is the CRP, the CRP program again, which nobody in Sawyer County wants to get in. I don't right. know why. But um, it's on the grassland part of it now. Sure. Um, the other thing is the uh, dairy margin coverage. There was a payment triggered for June, and Sawyer County, the farmers will end up with two hundred twenty thousand dollars, no, two hundred twenty-one thousand dollars because of the trigger of it. And that's about it. Okay. Any questions on the USDA report? And Brian is not on, is he? Uh, no. Okay. So I guess we do not have an LCO report. Uh, anybody have anything that they want to bring up for the good of the committee and the county? If not, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Balsam is a smart Good job. Oh, thank you.